Welcome back. So there's one more really neat linear algebra trick I want to tell you to analyze these uh, linear systems of equations called the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. Okay, so Cayley-Hamilton. Um, this is an absolute gem in linear, linear algebra. It's not that commonly known. Um, again, if you see Hamilton's name, you know this is going to be a big deal. Okay, the Cayley-Hamilton theorem is an extremely elegant way of representing solutions of x dot equals ax. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about this now. So the Cayley-Hamilton theorem is extremely simple to state. It says that every square matrix A, every square matrix, it's a square matrix, every square matrix A satisfies its own characteristic equation. Okay, satisfies its own characteristic. And the characteristic equation is the eigenvalue equation, its own characteristic or eigenvalue equation. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, if I take the equation um, determinant of s of um, a minus lambda i equals zero, this is the eigenvalue equation. The, this is only true for special numbers lambda that are eigenvalues of a. If I take this equation, let's say it is lambda to the n plus a n minus one lambda to the n minus one plus dot 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 plus uh, a two lambda squared plus a one lambda plus a zero equals zero. Let's say this is the characteristic polynomial, the roots of which are eigenvalues of the A matrix. This is remarkable. So Cayley Hamilton says, if I plug in A everywhere I see a lambda, this is also satisfied. It's a matrix equation. That, so the A matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. So if I write a n plus little a n minus 1 to the big matrix a n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a2 matrix squared plus a1 matrix plus a0 times the identity matrix, that equals 0 for every square matrix a. Um, Someone pointed out to me that this might not actually be true for every single square matrix A, so almost every matrix A satisfies its own characteristic equation. I don't want to get into the edge cases where this is not true. You can look this up in a linear algebra book and find out if this is true everywhere, but, but basically uh, this is true for, for most matrices, okay? I think it might actually be true for every matrix. And so what this means is that A n if I move all this stuff over to the right-hand side, I can say that a n equals some identity matrix plus some a matrix plus some a squared matrix dot 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 minus an a n minus 1 to the a n minus 1. So a n is a linear combination of all of these basis matrices. And that also means that a to the n plus 1 so think about it, if I take a to the n plus 1, I just take all of this stuff times a. This one will be an a to the n term, and I'll just plug all this stuff in for it. So any higher power, any a to the kind of greater than or equal to n power is going to equal a sum of these alpha j a to the j from j equals 0 to n minus 1. Okay, so every matrix, every power of A that's greater than or equal to n is just the sum of these first, you know, these first n minus 1 powers and the identity. This is really remarkable because what this allows you to do is take the solution. Remember the solution of x dot equals ax is e to the at times x naught. And remember e to the at equaled identity plus a t plus a squared t squared over 2 plus dot 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 forever. This went on forever. There's infinitely many terms here. But what's really remarkable is after the a to the n and a to the n plus 1 and a to the n plus 2 terms, I can write those as an honest to goodness sum of the first, the first terms up to a to the n minus 1. 
So this is absolutely remarkable. As I can write this e to the at instead of an infinite sum of matrices. I can write this as some, I'm going to write this as some coefficients. Um, I'm going to call it alpha 0 of t times the identity matrix plus alpha 1 of t times the A matrix plus alpha 2 of t A squared plus dot 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 plus alpha n minus 1 of t A to the n minus 1 period. There is, this is a finite sum. There's not an infinite sum of terms here. So I've taken all of the higher terms and I've written them in terms of these coefficients of lower powers of A and I've essentially boiled those down into time varying coefficients of these basis matrices. Now this is really remarkable because this finite sum representation of e to the at is going to allow us to show the equivalence of controllability and reachability. Okay, so in the next segment I'm actually going to construct using this expression an equivalence that if this, if the controllability matrix C, remember this is B, A, B, A squared, B, dot, 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 up to A to the N minus 1 B. And now you're starting to see like this only goes up to N minus 1, this only goes up to N minus 1. If this has rank N, if this is, has full, you know, if this spans all of Rn, I'm going to show you, I'm going to construct the fact that I can reach any state. Okay, so we're going to do that in the next segment. But it's built on the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. It's extremely, extremely useful, not just for this, but for lots of other things. Okay.